Hello everybody for another episode of Mondays with Mate. Today we are going to talk about design and we have Adriano with us. I've been with you for now, now for about 10 years. Yeah, soon we'll have our 10th anniversary. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Um, make, make yourself prepared for a nice present. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, but ever since we've been uh, building uh, this company and uh, trying to make uh, nice cars. Adriano is a little bit humble, so when we started off, there was no company. He was working at GM at that time. I was in university, so I was responsible for the technical stuff. He was for the design. He was designing the whole concept one on his own after work, and I was doing the stuff under the skin. And now, 10 years later, we have a very international team of 20 people that are handling everything from our merchandise to designing the car from the first sketch on the paper to the finished car, our infotainment system, graphics, and everything else that we are doing. We're trying to uh, grow the team even further, so if you have what it takes, please make sure you check out our careers page. Click the link below. First of all, I would like to congratulate Ivan for asking the winning question, uh, which will also win our mug. And based on his question, we designed the episode today to talk about design. So Ivan asked, where are your interior and exterior designers getting inspiration from? How do they make it so unique to other car companies? We get inspiration from everywhere, but uh, how the design process usually works is that uh, we benchmark other cars and you want to differentiate first of all. And since um, our, our car and our technology is so unique, it's really easy to also create a unique design for it that is specific for its functionalities. Um, form always follows function. I think that's really important. We, there's nothing fake on the car. Like every millimeter, it looks good, but every millimeter has been in design and engineering loops thousands of times to optimize really every millimeter, every air intake, uh, the front uh, guides the air, to the rear and so yeah. on, everything has a purpose. Yeah, we had it actually really easy because it is a completely different and unique layout that our that our hypercar has. So um, it, it, it wasn't really hard to differentiate between other uh, cars and, and other uh, design DNAs that other brands have. One of, one of the main features on our car is um, what actually shows our heritage or, or our, our Home country is the cravat on the body side. Usually, you know, some companies would put on their colors of the flag and so on, but we do it a little bit more uh, understated with the, with the cravat. So with the tie, basically. With, with the tie, yes. Which is a Croatian thing. We have that on the Concept 1 and also on the C2, on the side where the intake for the rear power train yes. is. Yes, the whole, the whole graphic on the body uh, tends to go and, and, and points towards this uh, feature. Proudly Croatian. I think maybe what is interesting and compared to other car companies, you are basically creating a heritage now. Like you don't have to look at the 100 year history to Ex replicate it somehow. Exactly. I mean, first of all, we don't have a, a regular gear shifter. Yeah? We, have, we have four independent motors. So how could we transfer that to the customer? How could we make this uh, usable for him? That's why we, for example, created the the two knobs, they are rather unusual for, for the cars, but they're really specific and unique for our car because of its functionality and possibilities. Yeah, that's the challenge, I think, to use the opportunities we have with the technology and make something unique in terms of design and usability. But I think you guys did a pretty good job. Thanks. I'm happy with it. Thanks. How did the liveries on your prototypes came about? Actually, for me, it's really easy to do liveries. Uh, all I have to do is I have to go to Petar, brief him for five minutes, and then stop him after a couple of hours, and that's it. <laughs> it magically appears. It magically appears, <laughs> so it's, it's really easy for me. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, kidding aside, uh, the actual liveries that you see are not liveries, these are just camouflage patterns. We will focus more on uh, special edition liveries uh, when we get the request from customers and when we're going to do special editions. Yeah, and the reason why we have this on the car is also that the cars that are running now, the prototypes that are in use, are that they are prototypes, they are not final cars, yes. so we don't want to show the details of the shape of them because they will change. We have probably many of you already saw this, this pattern on some of our um, proto cars. So um, this, is, this is actually just trying to be really geometric and uh, trying to hide the, the shapes of the car, but it also has some really cool details which have uh, numbers and letters, which if you have enough time to, 
look at it, you will figure out what it actually uh, tries to communicate. People usually think that designing is just taking a piece of paper and sketching something on that paper, but designing is a very long, very complex process that involves a lot of technical things, a lot of work with engineers and homologation and so on. And I would really like that Adriano covers that at some point, really to show you the whole design process, how that really functions. But we'll do that soon, I hope. If you really want to understand how that works, we'll need to prepare lots of things, so uh, stay tuned. Usually we have a giveaway based on your questions, but this time we have a challenge for you. So I have a helmet and I new, need a new livery for it. And instead of just giving it to Adriano, we want you to make a proposal for the design. It has to be Rimac inspired, electric, bold, it can be a little bit crazy as well. And you can find all the details and the template of how to do it in the video description below. The winner will get a goodie bag full of Rimac goodies and maybe something else as well. Oh, well, uh, I'm really looking forward to the proposals. Uh, make sure they're good because I will also participate in this challenge. Uh, because there is a goodie bag uh, in, in question. But um, not only will it uh, enable you to win a goodie bag, but also it will be a really good addition to your application because we're looking for graphic designers. And if you, are, if you want to build the brand with us, make sure you apply. And I think we forgot to say that we will actually make the winning design into reality. Were there any design engineering decisions you and your team faced that were harder than you'd expected to be? Yes, there were many challenges that we faced. For example, um, integrating uh, the airbag on the steering wheel was a, was a really hard uh, thing to do because not only it needs to fulfill all homologation requirements for Europe, but also for US. And since it's a two-stage airbag, it's, it's a really big module that, uh, that you have to make into a, a nice and neat, lightweight looking uh, uh, object. So, yeah, that's just one of the examples. Uh, I think one of the challenges we had was to get enough airflow also in the rear powertrain system through the rear side intakes where the crot is without having additional openings, right? And uh, since the ones on the side uh, are pretty far in the back and uh, the they're best. Not directly in the airflow. And, and not directly in the airflow, it was uh, quite tricky to. Uh, guide the air with, uh, with the shape of the body side into the right place. Yeah, because the engineers wanted to have additional openings, not just one on the side, they wanted to have yeah. openings above, which you said. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, uh, the most obvious thing is just to put a scoop that will catch the air, but of course that would improve uh, the, the airflow through the radiator, but it would, uh, of course, uh, worsen the drag. So we had, we had to do quite a couple of loops in order to have this uh, efficient and, and uh, integrated uh, in the car. Yeah, that's uh, the easy solution. Yeah. But uh, one thing about Adriano, he never goes for the easy solutions. So, you know, the engineers would just say, okay, let's just do it like this. You know, it ser serves the purpose and we're done. Like, what you want is impossible, but he pushes everybody to do a thousand iterations, loops and everything for every little detail, which annoys the engineers, but in the end, brings to a really good result. But if you go really back to the beginning of the C2 project, Adriano, you remember we had uh, looked into having the battery completely in the floor? Yeah. And this other concept, which we now in the end have chosen. So we had, we had uh, two options in the beginning, to put the batteries in the floor, which would drive the overall height up. And we had um, the T-shaped battery where, where you sit in between, or let's say on the sides of the, of the battery. So a really high tunnel and the seat's really low. Uh, that enables you to have a really uh, small front profile and therewith a much better aerodynamic performance. What would have happened if you chosen the other option, if you had the batteries in the floor regarding design? The car would have been um, by at least 15 centimeters higher. And this would, just by its dimension, it would be a different uh, segment of cars. One of the weird topics we had to resolve was uh, the knobs that we have integrated in the car next to the steering wheel. And uh, since it's a really protruding part, we had to take care that uh, when we do all the head impact tests and all the unbelted tests that uh, this part uh, breaks off at a certain point. But when you touch it and when you calibrate the car or, or when you interact with it, that it still feels firm and, 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 um, and premium. It's pretty incredible actually how much of the design is driven by the engineering. So we had an interesting uh, problem on the passenger side. So the HVAC, so the unit which is distributing the air for the interior 
um, was too low, which meant that the foot wouldn't fully be able to extend in the, in the footwell, which meant that the knee was too high, which meant that in the US crash test without the seat belt, there is unbelted crash test, the uh, dummy would move in a certain way so that the knees are not caught by the, uh, by the dashboard in the right way. And that would result that the rotation of the upper body wouldn't start at the right moment, which meant that the dummy would hit the head against the roof. So we had to redesign, I think, 20% of the car to move the age rack like, I think, 16 millimeters up. Yeah. Otherwise, the alternative was to raise the roof of the car and so on. So you won't believe how much millimeters like that have an impact on the whole car design, on the whole architecture, and how much you have to change if you move one thing. Yeah, I think this is a really good example that explains why the cars these days are getting bigger, bigger and bigger. Yeah? Because they, they just add up the, the clearance that is required for your safety. We were trying to rearrange the package in order to still have enough clearance for your safety. To not take the easy solution. Not to take the easy solution, yes. <laughs> so the last question is asking for advice. And this is really important, Adriana, because I get emails with questions like this all the time, like how to become a designer, what do you need to study to become a designer at Rimac or a designer in general. So please give some good advice so that in the future I can just send a link to this video. <laughs> no, I know you get lots of emails because you always forward them to me. Yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, so word of advice is just um, uh, study whatever is connected with design. So best thing would be to start with industrial design so you get the quite a wide overview of what design means. So practice your uh, design process skills, uh, do analytic thinking, try to look at uh, things uh, critically and, and, and try to formulate the problem there is. And then, of course, practice your skills. Yeah? So whatever you can uh, enhance and, and repeat in order to be, to be fast during your thinking process um, is just better for you. Yeah? So sketch, draw, do 3D modeling, do, do the whole spectrum of the process you know, by yourself and try every time when, when you do a new project to do it uh, in, a, in a more efficient way. Yeah? So speed, speed will help you to do for yourself many iterations that you can come up with a better result. That was it for today. If you'd like to see more episodes with other guests, let us know who the other guests should be. Thank you, Adriano, for participating this time. Have a great week.